Um, ben, did anybody reply to the lack? Uh, why shouldn't plagiarize? Not yet. Not yet. Okay, please. Can I just get at least one? Why do you plagiarize? Just respond with the color code. Um, yeah, not, none yet, so I'll proceed. Well, the most common reason why students plagiarize is due to lack of research skills. I mean, um, they, they, okay, somebody has responded here. Can't write. The, the, the research skill that is in question here is citation and um, and paraphrasing. So most times, most students who are early in their research career are not very vast in, in the knowledge of citation and uh, paraphrasing. And that's the reason why they plagiarize. So they don't know what plagiarism is and they don't know how to avoid it. Yes, another reason is lack of time. For instance, you're given an assignment, that is due in a month's time and then you are doing it a day to submission. Most likely you'll be tempted to do what we call copy and paste. You search online for somebody that has done it already and you copy and paste. Careless note taking, yes, that's another thing. If you're taking notes, it is expected that you cite immediately. I mean, why, where did I get this information from included? If you wait till after everything before you start looking for information you miss it you forget where you got this particular information from so it's always advised you take your notes and cite um confusion on how to cite sources yes that's another thing not understanding how to use plagiarism uh, sorry how to use reference managers not understanding the styles and knowing which styles to use so get to address most of those things into this class. To avoid plagiarism, the key is being organized and starting early. Yes, you have to start early. Record information sources. When you're taking your new sites, jot down at least the DOI or the name and the author, even the name alone at least. When you're taking down notes, remember we talked about what note taking is and we differentiated it from note making. Note taking is that initial jotting down of important points, sentences, paragraphs that you would need in your research. So when you're taking down this point, paragraph or sentences, always record the information sources. Next thing is a uh, paraphrase. We'll learn about that more. Um, reference all sources, we'll learn about that too. Uh, software used to detect plagiarism, identicate, uh, and this is mostly used by journals. We have Viper, we have Helioblast, and Tonitin. The most common ones are Atonticate, Tonitin, and Grammarly. Grammarly, uh, I think Grammarly plagiarism check is free. Tonitin is not free, and Atonticate is not free too. So as early career researchers, you can use Grammarly in running your plagiarism check, but it is not as robust as Tonitin and Atonticate. But at least it will give you what you're looking for. It can show you the percentage, but it may not tell you exactly what is being plagiarized, which is what Tonitin does. So let's take this exercise. It's just for 30 seconds. <laughs> Thank you. Please, this exercise for 30 seconds. I'll be waiting. Ebenezer, please just try and record the persons that will give the answer, please. The answers to the exercise will just take about three or four for the number of time we have. Please, Ebenezer, take note of the people that will give the answer to the exercise. Okay. Just number them, please. Number them. Uh -huh. Like, um, Adibu C has done number in one A two A three C for example. We have five more seconds. We've only gotten an answer from Ola Kulehim. 
Okay, we've got an answer from Tayo. Are you delay? Okay, I think we can proceed time of time of food exercise. Okay. Um, Ebenezer, please take note of the answers and the persons that have responded. Thank you. Okay. Let's look at, let's go into the next section, avoiding plagiarism. What do you do if you're, from the notes you are taking, you want to take the exact words of the person? For instance, let's say Fortune in his paper said, nose mask is a more effective mitigation strategy against COVID. Maybe you want to use, okay, let me, let me, let me, let me leave that one. Let me use a famous statement, a famous quote. Um, money answered all things. Let's say uh, this one is too common, but uh, usually you don't cite too common quotes anyway, but uh, let's say it's a common quote, but not too common. And you want it to be as it is. You don't want to paraphrase it because if you paraphrase it, you might lose the strength of the sentence. If you want to use the words as the author used it, you have to put quotation and cite it. Now, if you have to change the idea, right? You have to change the idea. Sorry, change the words or maintain the idea. You don't need to put a quotation mark, but you can. You have to cite it. For example, if I'm saying um, nose mask usage is an effective mitigation strategy against COVID. And if I have to paraphrase this, assuming this is what I got from my literature, if I have to paraphrase it, I can say the most effective or the most crucial uh, measure that reduces COVID, I'm, I'm not really thinking, <laughs> uh, for example, the most effective strategy for reducing COVID-19 transmission is the use of face mask. I have maintained the idea, but I have changed the sentence structure and the wording. That is what we call paraphrasing. I still need to cite the original owner of this idea. But if it is not the press somebody's words, if it is not somebody's idea, you should not cite it. Okay. Um, the first thing is for you to read, you read the idea. Um, the next thing is for you to point the main idea. When you read a particular sentence, read a particular paragraph, try and give yourself some time to digest it, to understand what are the main points that the author is trying to present. And then when you identify the main point, you go back to reading it again. And when you go back to reading it, the next step is for you to paraphrase. For me, I would say interpret it in your local dialect. When you interpret in your local dialect, it shows that you understand it very well. So when you interpret in your local dialect, now look for another way to express this idea. That's just what paraphrasing is all about. Then when you finish paraphrasing, you have to check if the sentence, the new sentence that is paraphrased has not been changed. I mean, if the idea has not been changed, you have to keep that in check. You have to be sure that the idea you started with is the idea you're ending with. The last step is for you to cite the source. So these are paraphrasing tools. We're going to do the first practical. Um, the most common one is Quillbots. Uh, you can use paraphrase. I have not used it before, but I, people say they use it. But I have so much, re so many reasons why I would always recommend Quillbot for um research enthusiasts so but one thing you should note is that while using these tools you have to be careful because this is uh, uh it's 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 a machine it doesn't really know what you have in mind it does the work of changing sentence structure and changing vocabularies it might sometimes um alter the original meaning of this content so let's take our first practical how to use Quillbot for paraphrasing. So uh, we'll do this by ourselves and I only come in when we have difficulty. Go to your browser. If you've gone to your browser, just come in yes. If you've gone to your browser, just come in yes. 
open your browser, then type quillbot.com. Can you see this? Quillbot.com, double L. Okay, quillbot.com, have you typed it? Go to the website. Now, if you've gone to Quillboard, you've gone to the website, go to where you have, maybe I should assist you. I think some people are not fully. Go to where you have pastes and then paste this text that I've dropped in the chat box. Um, can everybody see my uh, Chrome? Please, can anybody see my Chrome? Hello, somebody should communicate with me. No, I think you, you have to see share. My no, no, I think you have to share it once again. Can you see it now? Hello, yes. Can you see the Chrome? Yes, now? yes. Okay, yes, yes, yes. So I have typed in Quillboard. And this is how the interface of Qbot looks like. Now, Qbot has a free version, and then it has a uh, paid version. Of course, you know, the free version will have some um, limitations. And then when you pay for the, uh, when, you, when you have the premium version, you can see where they say upgrade to premium. You get to access a lot of things about Qbot. But the good thing is that you can use the free version to do as much as you, I shouldn't say as much as you can do it, you can use it to do something reasonable. I mean, of course, paraphrase reasonably. So this is what I am saying. And I click on paraphrase. Has anybody gotten it? Has anybody tried something, please? So you paste it and then you click on paraphrase. Please, if anybody has tried it, just let me know so that we can proceed. At least one person has to get it right. Hello, Eben, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, have, have you tried the Quillbot? Yes, uh, for me, I've even used it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, please, can you paste your result, Mohammed? Khadija Mohammed, can you paste the result you've gotten from the Quillbot so others can appreciate it? Please, whatever result you've gotten, just paste it so others can appreciate. Tayo, can you paste it?
anybody that has tried it, please just, I mean, with this public face marks usage is the most effective mitigation strategy. I'm just experiencing some technical challenges. Okay, now that says the most effective COVID mitigation approach is to wear a public face mask. I think you, Squibboard is not supposed to have skipped that. Yes, public face mask. The most effective mitigation approach is to wear public face mask. So that's how it works. And if you have a, 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 a work that is plagiarized, is copy and paste, or maybe you yourself, you are copying from a source, you can just paste it in Quibboard, paraphrase. Maybe if you are under so much pressure and you don't have time to think, just paste it on Quibboard and you quickly paraphrase and then you move on. So let's continue with our lesson. All right, so exercise two. Uh, just for 30 seconds, so please drop your answers. Remember the format is number one A, for example, number two A, number three A, if that's your answer. We have 30 seconds. Eben, please take note of people that would be answering and take note of the answers too. We have 10 more seconds. Tyus has responded. Okay, uh, time up, time up. Thank you very much. We proceed. Citation. What is citation? Is a reference to the source of information using your research. You have told us something, but you know, as long as knowledge is concerned, um, most of the things that we say, most of the things.